but Luke chapter 7 look at verse number 39 the Bible says now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it he speak within himself saying this man if he were a prophet would have known who and what man of woman this is what do you note the emphasis this man if he were a prophet would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth her toucheth him for she is a sinner verse 40 and Jesus answering said unto him Simon I have somewhat to say unto thee and he said master say on there was a certain debtor creditor which had two debtors the one owned 500 pence the other 50 look at verse 42 and when they had nothing to pay he frankly forgave them both tell me therefore which one of them will love him most Simon answered and said watch his answer I suppose that he to whom he forgave most and he said unto him thou hast rightly judged your father please help me God in my own strength I'm unable to do this but I pray that you would wash cleanse and purge I pray you'd empower I pray you'd use me as your mouthpiece tonight God, open our hearts to the needs of people around us. Open our minds. Help us less to be less judgmental. And help us to show compassion. Please do that work. Hide me behind the cross tonight. Take your wood on, exalt yourself. We ask in Christ and for his sake. We noted the invitation last time. We saw, we saw the intrusion at the meal. We noted who the Pharisee was, Simon, enemy. Sitting at meal at the house of the Pharisee. The intrusion, a woman came in. She came in not to eat she came in not to beg for food but she came in to honor the Savior and I said you and I gotta be careful how we judge people when they come in church I'm guilty of sometimes misjudging people's motive God help me but I pray that God would help us. People come in church for help. Amen. They have issues in their life. There is no perfect person upon the face of this earth except who has ever walked except Jesus Christ. Right. Everybody is facing something in their life. Yeah. And we noted how she expressed her worship. She was broken. She washed his feet with her tears. She dried his feet with her hair, which was a glory. Then she anointed his feet with the most expensive thing that she'll ever have, a year's earning. And I want to conclude this aspect by saying, if we would honor, if you and I will ever honor Christ, we would have to learn to sacrifice ourselves, our honor, our glory, and everything we have Amen. in honoring him. Amen. Then tonight, I want us to note the indignation at meal. There's something I've found out in my life, and uh, I, I've seen it. That wherever or whenever Christ is honored, 
the devil's crowd will be upset. If, if you plan just to live the normal life, nobody troubles you. If, if you decide, I'm going to live for God, irrespective of what is in my life, I'm going to do my best for him. I will live above the line. They call you a freak. They call you a religious zealot. The crowd will always be upset. And listen, even in church, people who are supposedly to be Christians yeah. will get upset with you when you raise your bar a little higher as you serve God. And uh, no dear reverence, and I'm trying to stick with the text, but no dear reverence. And the anger ignition. Look at verse number 39. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it. What did he see? He saw the outward manifestation of what was inside. But he was too blind to see it. Because what he was looking at was the outside. I want to say that again. This guy, the Pharisee, was blinded by what came out of the heart. What he saw was the outside. How many of us have judged people by the outside? By the way, you know, only God sees the inside. Right. Only God sees the motive. The Pharisee was very critical of Christ in his mind. Now watch this. In his mind, not outwardly. In his mind. He gave no respect to the person of Christ in his mind. And I want you to note the answer he gave, preacher friend. When the Pharisee, verse 39, which had bidden him, saw it, he speak within himself, saying what? This man, this man, this man. Now, watch with me in verse number 40, where after Christ confronted him, I wouldn't have time for that. But, but I want you to do a little contrast in verse number 40. Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, say what? Master. Right. So what, the, look, not the scorn. The indignation, the anger. In the answer. Understand, he invited Christ not so much so as to learn from him, but to trap him. And so, number one, as I examine this, I find when this Simon, the Pharisee, in verse 39, he speak within himself, saying, this man. Listen to me. Many of us would not literally go out and do things outwardly, but it's in there. Do you get that? It's festering in there. Hatred against people is festering in there. Your opinion about people in here, because the heart is desperately wicked. I wonder what you're thinking about your neighbor. I preached here some time ago about love your neighbor. Remember that message? Remember we said who your neighbor is? Yeah. Who's your neighbor? The one who you think is despitefully using you. Remember about the good Samaritan? He went down and he was despised, but he picked up that guy. And did yeah. good to him. And Christ asking, who's your neighbor? Now I know we in the 
God help me, I've got to be careful. I know we're in the heat of politics. I've said to our folks back home, don't, don't bring politics in the church. I've said to our folks, listen, vote for whoever you want. Because everybody is free to vote for whoever. That's a freedom. But, but watch this. How am I going to ever witness to the president if I try to take him down? How are, you, how are you going to witness to whether they're Republican or Democrats if, 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 if you take them down? Are we okay? Some of you look at me. You're crazy. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I, I find it's amazing what happened in the text. He said within his heart. Sometimes we say it with our mouths. We take people down. You know that God is not when that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. That is why God says pray for everyone in authority. Are we okay? That may be the last time I preach. But I'm just going to say what God. God help me. I mean sometimes the most vile things that come from the mouth of Christians. About their neighbor. Because you disagree with your neighbor. Because you disagree with your preacher. Because you disagree with your wife or your husband. Because you disagree with somebody at work. The most vile things come from your mind, gets into your mouth, and you spit it out. And then you can't take it back. God help me. He thinks within his mind. But what he does not know. Is that he's speaking, he's looking somebody who's a mind reader. God knows what's in the heart. Listen, look up here. God knows what you're thinking right now, consider what I'm preaching. He knows. God knows what's in our mind even before it gets there. So it's not just going out and do the sin, but we think it here. And God would never allow this to go free. Not how God took charge of that. He's thinking in his mind and he downgrades Christ. He denies Christ's deity. He says, this man, this man, no respect. You invited him in that, that verse, verse 40. He's saying, Master. But now he's thinking, this man. Why? Because in his mind, he's prejudiced by the woman's outer garments right. and her reputation. Yep. Can't get away from that. So, how is he? This man. He belittles him. He disrespects him. He denies Christ's deity. Not just that. This man, watch this. If he were a prophet. If he were a prophet. He is not recognizing Christ as a prophet. Because his motive is not right. His motive is trying to trap Christ. His motive is trying to take him down. So he denies Christ's deity. He denies Christ's dignity. He looks down on Christ. This man. This man. Wow. Not just that. He denies Christ's discernment. If he were a prophet. If he were a prophet, he would know who this woman is. And he would have never allowed her to touch him. But he would learn in the next few minutes how wrong he was concerning Christ. Not just that, but not the ignorance and the anger. The ignorance. 
I'm, I'm telling you what manner of a woman this woman is for she's a sinner he was ignorant of the change that took place in her life if he knew who this woman is he would never allow that woman to touch him but he was ignorant of the change is not how it goes when you get saved somebody said I give you two months just now you'll be back with us or, may, or maybe you really got saved and somehow you got messed up and everybody gives up on you are we okay it's amazing how these things go and, by, and, and I'm telling you they first it's right in our churches it grows He was ignorant of a change that took place in her life. He did not, as I said a while ago, recognize her action as showing a change in her life as a sinner. Wow. This guy was inconsistent Amen. in his anger. Brother Jordan, he got upset with Christ for giving time to a sinner. But when we began that message, I said that when you invite, when in, in that time, when they invited somebody home, they were supposed to be hospitable to that person. This woman did what he was supposed to do. But he's criticizing her. He's criticizing the master. He's filled with rage and anger. But really the person to be angry against was himself. We always get reasons why we do what we do. We always do. Always do. <laughs> Passionate to criticize others until it gets to our door. I, I, I see characteristics of this Pharisee, Simon, sometimes in my life. When, I, when I'm supposed to be doing something, I didn't do it, and somebody else do it, why get upset? Are we okay? It's amazing. <laughs> he was supposed to show common courtesy to Christ. Instead of acknowledging his own fault, that Pharisee show himself up by blaming somebody else. I don't know about you. But I'm telling you, my wife is here and she knows. But sometimes I'm really guilty of that. Guilty. As husbands, as wives, as children, when we don't get our way, when it doesn't go the way we want it, when one thing's done this way and it's not done that way, what do we do? Gossip, tear down, criticize somebody. When we're looking for a position, we don't get that position, what do we do? Tear down the person who gets the promotion. Don't you see the same thing happens in our lives? Yeah. I pray God help me. And again, I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. These are the things that I find sometimes in my life. And if, if you're perfect, bless your heart. But please pray for me. Note with me from verse 40 to 43, the instructions at meal. I'll give you this and we'll close. Not the instructions at meal. Wow. Jesus and Jesus answered and said unto Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. And then Christ gave 
Recall the parable of the story. Certain creditor, which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence, the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said, thou hast rightly judged. Not with me as we note this. Instructions from the master. Watch this. <laughs> Watch the language. <laughs> this is why he's God. He knows what's taking place in our lives. Sometimes he puts, up, puts us up against a wall and get our conscience to hit us. So he's now working on Simon the Pharisee. And he said, Simon, I know you call me master and all that stuff, but I got some, I've got some questions for you. Christ is about to teach this Pharisee a very, very important lesson. He said, Simon, Simon, verse 40, I have somewhat to say unto thee. Now watch this. This is no loving talk. That's no to see this is not a sweet language it's a language of one who's upset over what Simon was thinking Christ would not tolerate Simon's thought which was sin Christ would not tolerate that and so Christ said Simon Simon Simon, I've got to say something to you. It's not a lovey, lovey, dovey stuff. I'm upset of what you're thinking. You've not come out and say it in words, but I know what you're thinking, and it's not right. You are doing wrong by your thoughts. So here Christ is speaking to Simon. He gives an illustration or a parable. <laughs> this parable or illustration was to contrast between Simon the Pharisee and the woman, the sinner, the great sinner, who Simon would never invited to his house to meal, who Simon was angry against, whom Simon thought was too low to wash the feet of the Savior. So this parable was to sort of handcuff Simon. Illustrate the contrast between Simon, the so-called religious leader, who knew the law, who stood up in public place and prayed, who looked religious, but inside was dead men's bones, was play acting. I found out the best thing is just be honest and be transparent. He gave that illustration, brother, and he said both of these men were in debt. Both of them. Sin is pictured as a debt. The greater debt was to picture the woman's great sin the 500 and the lesser debt the 50 was to picture the Pharisee sin both of them could not pay their debt Amen. whether you are worse sinner than somebody else whether you grew up in church or whether you are pastor or preacher or evangelist whether you're a Sunday school teacher, whether you're a choir director, it's irrelevant your position in church or out of church. For all have seen and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. <laughs> so the greater debt, the five hundred was illustrate 
This woman, who Simon considered to be the worst of sinners. And in the 50, first to illustrate the Pharisee's view of his own sin. I'm better than that person. Wow. I pay my tithe. I give to missions. I'm involved in the choir. You, saw, you don't see how I dress? I have jacket and tie and I'm looking good. I don't expose my body when I come to church. I don't go some places. I don't do some things like I know this sister in the church is doing. What in the world is she come to do in our church? Or rather, what is she come to do in my church? I am God's bodyguard. You know some people call themselves FB, God's FBI? They want to investigate everything. And if in their mind the pastor is not doing what they say, in their mind he's compromising. Are we okay? God's FBI. God's bodyguard to put people out of the church. You know there were 99 who was safe. It was one that went astray. You know, good shepherd left and went seeking the one. Everyone is important to him. In a way, I'm a little embarrassed about what I used to be. But I came to the culture of what I was taught. And so Christ is about to teach this guy to teach me and to teach us a lesson. <laughs> it made no difference. None could pay for the sin debt. None. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away man's sin. I'm unthankful for that tonight. Because if I do please you, my sins would never be washed. If you got to pre please the preacher, your sins would never be washed. The way I get forgiveness is by going to him. I, I was taught to go to the priest, but I don't have to go to the priest. Because he is my mediator. Jesus Christ himself. I can go directly to him when I mess up. Do we get that? I can go to him and seek his forgiveness. But would you watch that? He forgives me, but you refuse to forgive me. Do you get a picture Christ is trying to picture here? Through that illustration? Nobody could pay for their debt. But he did. Both of them were in a bad situation. One had 500, one had 50. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. Look at verse 42. I love that. Verse 42. When they had nothing to pay, he what? Come on, church. He what? Frankly forgave them both. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That word frankly means freely. That word frankly means entirely. That word frankly means I couldn't do anything, but he just let me go. He freed me up. He set me free. For who the Son have what? Could I say this? It's not who the pastor. Although we have a position as pastor of the church. But I'm thankful it's not the pastor, the priest, the pope, the archbishop, the deacon. By the way, it's not even the church. Because the church has no power to forgive sins. It's him. <laughs> 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 
Well, listen, if, if we would take, if, uh, maybe not you. You, you, you know everything already. If I would take this in, it's going to help me. It's going to help me. I, I need to quickly move on. I'm telling you, both were forgiven. Both were freely and fully taken care of. God says that you should not sin, but if any man sin, Amen. we have an advocate. Amen. Go to him. Don't stay on the sin burden. Amen. Go to him. Both were forgiven. Their debts were cleaned out. It's as if they never did anything wrong. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, you remember, but God chose not to. <laughs> Forgiveness saves us from a lot of punishment. You know, during the Lent season, some people walk for miles, beating their bodies, bleeding. Some people walk for salvation. I'm glad tonight all I had to do when God's Holy Spirit spoke to my heart was to acknowledge I needed him. Amen. And he saved me. Yeah. But I want to say something else too. Yeah. Even as a Christian, I mess up sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And when I do, Amen. I have to go to him and ask him forgiveness. Yeah. And I'm thankful to God he forgives me. Uh, Brother Jordan, what a wonderful savior. <laughs> At any time, midnight, one o'clock in the morning, yeah. all of us here should be clean. Sure. Because we have an advocate. Yeah. Do we get that? Yeah. Hey, brother. You and I shouldn't be burdened down and let the devil kill us. We've haunted by memories of sin of what we've done wrong. We go to God's forgiveness. He's forgiven us and we are clean. We are free. Amen. That's what he said in his word. Your wife may not forgive you, but he did. Your husband may not, but he did. Your pastor, your church, and I, I, I don't want to spend there, but there are so many things that hinder us from moving on for God. Because we look over our shoulder. Listen, and the devil is an amazing person. He tempts you to do what is wrong, and then he brings it back to your remembrance. Yes, Amen. <laughs> God, through his mercies, forgive us. Cleanse us. Washes us clean. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Takes out the mess in our lives. No inquiry. <laughs> After giving that illustration, Christ put Simon on the spot. You cannot get away with Christ. Amen. Note what he says. Verse 43, Simon answered and said, I suppose. Now, verse 42. They had nothing to pay. He frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to him whom he forgive most. And he said to him, that was rightly said. Why would Christ try to inquire of Simon? Put him on the spot. Because if Christ didn't put Simon on the spot, Simon could just throw it over his shoulder. Yeah. You know, many times we go to church and we hear a wonderful message. Mm -hmm. And you say, what the preacher is saying is true. God's spirit convicts you of sin, but you never make it personal. You just throw it on your shoulder and you keep on hearing good messages and hearing good messages and hearing good messages, how we should live, what we should do. We keep on hearing it and hearing it. And, hearing. and every time we hear it, we just push it on our shoulder and move on. But the message has to resonate in our hearts. Sure. And so Christ, he wants that message to resonate in Simon's heart. 
Simon, you must apply this message to your life. Amen. Don't just hear it. Not the response to the inquiry. Simon's response was very revealing. Not the character of Simon's response. He said, I suppose. I suppose. I suppose. You don't have to be a professor to see the scorn still in his heart. Christ has caught him barehanded. Handcuff him. He's under conviction. But he sees scorn at the master. I suppose. <laughs> Simon is in trouble and he knows it. He's expressing his arrogance and disdain for the Lord. His unwillingness to apply the truth to himself. Right. Most times we come to church, we hear a message and our mind is thinking of somebody else. Right. My neighbor, not me. My oh, pastor preach it. My husband needs that. Right. Really? Pastor, preach it. My daughter needs that. Pastor, I wish my daughter was in church tonight. Or are you thinking, God, why didn't that sister be in church tonight? That sister really need that message. Do you know why you're here? Because all of us need it. We need it. <laughs> so Christ is pressing it on. <laughs> And, and, and Simon is not willing to apply it. Thou hast rightly said the correctness of that message, of that inquiry. You have said it right. Jesus made Simon pronounce judgment upon himself. He did not treat Christ well as the woman did. Right. What's the rational in that? Christ said, tell me which of them will love him most. Now, there's something we need to keep in mind. Christ is not saying, the more we sin, the more we love God. Right. Or to love God, we must sin more. No. It's not the amount of sin, but the awareness of sin. Right. Amen. It's the awareness of sin in our lives. Because until we acknowledge sin, we will not go for forgiveness. Right. Amen. So Christ push that down so that Simon would become conscious of his own fault. God help me. Scripture will never support the perverted idea that we see in today. That you must sin more to love God more. That's not true. That's not true. That's why I ask you tonight. Where do you stand? In our day-to-day -day life, as we look at other people, as we judge people, as we see people, as people come to church, people in our workplace, as we watch television, as we go to Walmart, Wally World, as we go to the mall, and you see people walking, Sometimes you see people walking with all type of tattoos on their body and you say, yucks. You know Christ died for that person? Right. You go down the mall and you see people with their short, short dresses revealing themselves and you say, what in the world? You know Christ died for that person? You know, you, go, you, you, you are at work and this person giving you all the trouble. And you just can't stick that person. Maybe Christ put that person in your life so that you could witness to them. Be careful how you judge them. Listen. Christianity should not be lived in church. It should be lived out of church. When we step out of these doors, we have to show people who Christ is in our lives. You know, for many people, the only gospel they'll ever see is our lives. 
be careful. Be compassionate. Be loving. For with the same measure that you made out to others, it will come back to you. I like what your preacher said. And he keeps saying that to me. He rather err on the side of compassion and helping somebody than not to do it. I pray this church would grow with more love for each other. I pray it would be less judgmental. I pray our desire would be to see people come to know him. And brother, when you will mess up, and I'm sure your wife knows that. Be quick to ask forgiveness. By the way, it's easy for me to preach it. But it's something that's going to leave it. I pray God help us. Just bow your heads for a while. I've just said what God has laid on my heart. What is it teaching me in my own life as a pastor, as a husband? When I see my own mess, sometimes I'm the biggest person to judge myself hard. Maybe you come tonight and say, Lord, I don't, look, I don't like what I see in me. I don't like what I see. You forgive me much. And I need to forgive others. To be less judgmental. To be less harsh. To show more compassion. To show more kindness. Will you say, preacher, would you just pray for me? Would you slip your hand up? Would you slip your hand up? Preacher, would you just pray for me? God bless you. Preacher, would you pray for me? Preacher, would you pray for me? God bless you. Father, I love this church. We've got a wonderful thing going. But as you've taught me in my own life and my own failures and shortcomings, and it's you. It's going to you. It's looking to you. And God, in my way is right with you. Be right with others. Give us a compassionate heart. Give me a compassionate heart for others. Not to be too quick to judge. But to reach a hand of helping. As you taught this Pharisee, help us to get that message. Thank you so much your presence and your sweet spirit. In Jesus' name. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.